Now we are going to discuss hemorrhoids is very very important. What are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are normal anatomical cushions. So what is the function? It helps in defecation. Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids are normal anatomical cushion. These are normal anatomical cushion. Clear? So what is the function of hemorrhoid? These are normal anatomical cushions which helps in defecation. Clear? What are the components of hemorrhoids? There is venule, arterioles, smooth muscle fibers and elastic tissues. So what are the components? Hemorrhoids are composed of venules, arterioles, smooth muscle fibers and elastic tissues. So how to remember? Mnemonic is vas, mnemonic is vas, venules, arterioles, smooth muscle and elastic tissues. Whenever patient is in the lithotomy position and we are performing the examination, what is the location of hemorrhoids? So you know that there are three hemorrhoids located at 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock position. So see the location. This is 3 o'clock, this is 7 o'clock and this is 11 o'clock position. So 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock position. What is most important that in which position you are going to examine the patient, patient is lying in the lithotomy position. If you see this 3 o'clock, yes, what is the exact location? This is left lateral. 7 o'clock, this is right posterior and 11 o'clock, that is right anterior. So 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that is left lateral, 7, that is right posterior and 11 o'clock, that is right anterior. So these are the locations of hemorrhoid. So important point, we discussed that hemorrhoids are normal anatomical cushions. Then why it is considered as a disease? See, the patients who are having constipation, in these patients what happens, whenever they are going for defecation, they are going to strain a lot. So because of excessive straining, because patients are having constipation, what happens, there is abnormal descent of these hemorrhoids. So whenever there is abnormal descent of these hemorrhoids into the lower part of anal canal, what happens, patient is having constipation. So the hard fecal matter, when it's passing out, what happens, it is going to injure these cushions and because of injury of these cushions what will happen patients are having bleeding so after defecation majority of patients are complaining of bleeding and what kind of bleeding is going to occur it is painless bleeding so what is the basic problem these patients are having constipation because of that patients are straining a lot so there is abnormal descent of hemorrhoids and there is injury by hard fecal matter leading to painless bleeding so we discussed that hemorrhoids are most common cause of lower gi bleeding it is usually painless and the amount of bleeding is small. Sometimes it's 1 ml, 3 ml, 5 ml. So another important question, what is the most common cause of significant lower GI bleeding? Significant lower GI bleeding, most common cause, colonic diverticula. And third, most common cause of occult lower GI bleeding or obscure lower GI bleeding, that is vascular ectasia or angiodysplasia. So how these patients present? These patients are coming to us in OPD and what is the presentation? See the clinical features. Patient comes to us with the complaint of painless bleeding after defecation. So in majority of cases, what's the problem? These patients are having painless bleeding. So there is painless bleeding. So patient is going to describe that, sir, after defecation, there is drop, drop by drop blood coming in the pan. And this is painless. Apart from painless bleeding, some patients are also complaining of mucus discharge. And in some of the patients, there is prolapse of hemorrhoid. So what are the other problems? Patients are also complaining of mucus discharge. So in some patients, there is mucus discharge. And in some patients, there is prolapse of hemorrhoid there is prolapse of hemorrhoid. Imagine any patient who is coming to your OPD or emergency with lower GI bleed. In all those cases, we are going to perform digital rectal examination. So first question, if I am going to perform digital rectal examination, tell me hemorrhoids are palpable or non-palpable? Very important point. It is non-palpable. Remember, hemorrhoids are non-palpable. So even if you're performing digital rectal examination, you're not going to feel hemorrhoids. So indirectly, this question is asked that we are going to diagnose hemorrhoids on digital rectal examination or on proctoscopy. So obviously, we are going to make the diagnosis on proctoscopy. So see how we make the diagnosis. Diagnosis. Important point. We perform digital rectal examination and you know, on digital rectal examination, hemorrhoids are non-palpable. Hemorrhoids, important point, we perform digital rectal examination, but hemorrhoids, these are non-palpable, non-palpable. 
Clear? So indirectly they ask you that hemorrhoids are diagnosed by or what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis? This is proctoscopy. So proctoscopy, we perform proctoscopy for the diagnosis. So proctoscopy, this is the investigation of choice for diagnosis. This is the investigation of choice for diagnosis of hemorrhoids. So you are going to visualize the hemorrhoids directly whenever we are performing the proctoscopy. Clear? So we perform the proctoscopy and we are going to visualize the hemorrhoids directly. Now important point, what are the types of hemorrhoid? There is internal hemorrhoid and there is external hemorrhoid. So there must be some landmark. What is that landmark? You can see here, the landmark is this. This is what? Dentate line or pectinate line. So what is the name? This landmark is dentate line also known as pectinate line. So what is the landmark? That is dentate line or pectinate line. Clear? So first is internal hemorrhoid. Internal means it is located internal. So you can see here, this is internal hemorrhoid. This is internal hemorrhoid. And what is the location? You can see here, the location of internal hemorrhoid. Yes, it is located internal to dentate line. Second is external hemorrhoid. So external hemorrhoid is located external to dentate line. Here you can see, this is external hemorrhoid. So what is the location? You can see, the location is external to dentate line. If you see the area which is located above or internal to dentate line, this is pain insensitive. So this region, here you can see, this region which is internal to dentate line, this region is pain insensitive. This is pain insensitive. Clear? And the region which is located distal to or external to dentate line, that is pain sensitive. So this region is pain sensitive. Clear? This region is pain sensitive. So term is self-explanatory. If I'm going to ask you that out of internal and external hemorrhoid, painless bleeding occurs in internal hemorrhoid because it is located in pain insensitive region and painful bleeding occurs in external hemorrhoid. Clear? So in internal hemorrhoid, since the location is internal here, since the location is internal to dentate line, so what kind of bleeding in internal hemorrhoid you can see? In internal hemorrhoids, you saw here, in internal hemorrhoids, what kind of bleeding is there? There is painless bleeding. Why? Because it is located internal to dentate line and this is located in pain insensitive region. How you treat internal hemorrhoid? The treatment depends on the degree. So we will discuss the treatment of internal hemorrhoid. It depends on the degree. If you see external hemorrhoid, so since it is located, external hemorrhoid, since it is located external to dentate line, so in this case, what kind of bleeding? There is painful bleeding. Clear? In external hemorrhoid, in these patients, what kind of bleeding? There is painful bleeding. What happens? Whenever there is thrombosis in external hemorrhoid, the pain is there. But if patient is not going to take any kind of treatment, the pain subsides within 5 days. So this is also known as 5 days painful self-curing lesion. So what is the term used for external hemorrhoid? This is also known as 5 days. The term used, this is also known as 5 days painful self-curing lesion. So term used, this is 5 days painful self-curing lesion. 5 days painful self-curing lesion. Clear? Sometimes what happens in the hemorrhoids, there is recurrent thrombosis. And whenever, you can see here, whenever there is recurrent thrombosis going on in this external hemorrhoid, what is the appearance? Appearance is reddish black. This is known as semi-ripe black current. So because of recurrent thrombosis, external hemorrhoid looks like semi-ripe black current. So what kind of appearance? It looks like semi ripe black current it is semi ripe black current and why it looks like semi ripe black current because of recurrent thrombosis so whenever in these patients of external hemorrhoid there is recurrent thrombosis so if there is recurrent thrombosis recurrent thrombosis the appearance is semi ripe black current we used similar term red current so where we use this term red current jelly, you remember, patients of intussusception after multiple attacks, the child is going to pass little amount of stool mixed with blood. Appearance is red current jelly. And here this is semi-ripe black current. External hemorrhoids, it's easy to treat. So what is the treatment? We go for excision. So what's the treatment of external hemorrhoid? For external hemorrhoid, the treatment is 
we go for excision clear so the treatment is excision clear in internal hemorrhoid the treatment depends on the degree so for that you should know that what's the classification of internal hemorrhoid 